All right, so this is going to be a new format where I try to squeeze as much as possible into a single video. Um, I'm just going to be talking over the time lapse, so let's get going. All right, so let's just begin. Um, there's nothing really that complicated. All I do is just start off by adding a circle, extrude it, move it up, extrude it even more. Just keep doing that until, you know, until you have the basic shape of a lamp. I'm not going to be adding materials right now. I will be doing that later in the video. But yeah, I am also using like separate objects for different parts of the lamp because that allows me to, well, I just use the parent function to move all of the objects with each other and that gives me more freedom in the future if I want to change the way a certain part looks. I don't have to actually go into the mesh and change the whole mesh all over again. And honestly, I would recommend this um, if your object has like different materials, like tons of different materials. For example, for this lamp, I'm using four different materials. I'm not counting the cord that I'll be making later. But yeah, if your object has like four, five, six different materials, and they're all like distinct parts that you can change, definitely use different objects and just parent them with each other. All right, so let's get on to the next part. Um, next up, I'm using like a Bezier curve to actually, well, to make the cord. And it's not really that complicated. I'm using like the easy method where I just move my 3D cursor to a point where I want the Bezier curve to be. And then it's like all easy from there on out because, you know, the Bezier curve is already at a point where I can start off with. You go to the second point, you move the Bezier curve over there, and then I just move the Bezier curve towards the back of the cabinet. And later on, I will like cover it so the camera can't actually see where the cord is going. So yeah, that's a fun trick that you can use. You hide the things that you don't want to model with other objects. All right, so next up, what I do is basically I need to add more details to the lamp and its base, right? So it's really not that complicated. I just select a bunch of different uh, vertices. So I'm skipping three every single time over here. And what I'm doing is basically I will be enabling the proportional editing of like connected vertices. And that way I can make this nice little shape over here. I do have to move the lamp down. I do have to add a bevel, a subsurf modifier. And honestly, it ends up looking really nice. And obviously like when you make changes, uh, when you add modifiers to an object, you need to readjust all of the different parts of it because all of a sudden, pretty much everything just changed. So always keep in mind that if you're making like massive changes to the entire mesh of an object, take a look at other parts of the mesh as well. Okay, and this next bit is really simple. I just basically duplicate the object and just Keep an eye on the reference image whenever you duplicate objects like this because there's always some changes that need to be made. So over here I adjust like the top of the lamp because that makes it seem less duplicated. Alright, so next up we use, you know, just a plane to make the power socket and my only advice for this is to use insets. Um, new people, like people who are new to actually modeling, tend to forget that insets are amazing. They solve all of your problems and whenever you need to have like separate objects nested inside each other. So for example, the buttons, then the panel that the button is on and then the outside of the panel are like different parts. So insets work amazingly well in this situation. Just take a look. So I understand over here that I'm going to be trending away from the reference picture by a lot. And that's primarily because the things that are in the reference picture are a bit of a headache to model. And I feel like I can do slightly better than that. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making books over here. I'm just going to be making a couple of books and the primary purpose, like their primary reason for existence is to hide where the power cord goes. And I will be doing the same thing on the other side with a different item. And this technique, like for the make, um, the technique I use for making books, is something that I've been doing for quite a while. It's really simple, it's really quick, you don't really need a lot of effort, and you can easily make the book holder. Um, 
whatever it is like that's stopping the book from falling down you can just create that as well so yeah this is nice and next up let's go to the right side um what i do over here is i i was kind of just doing random stuff and i realized oh wait how about a phone because nearly everyone has a smartphone nowadays so why don't i just make a smartphone over here and in order to do that i pretty much just use a plane and extrude it i realized that okay it's probably a good idea to make a sort of a charger one of those fancy smartphone holder charger thingy majiggies and yeah so it's really important to not actually rotate your items a lot when, when you're like modeling them because it's a lot easier to model when you know where the z x and y axes are so that's why I end up like undoing a lot of steps over here because I want to go back to the point where I didn't actually rotate my phone. At first I wanted the phone on the table, then I was like, you know what, let's make that holder thing, Gimajiki. So yeah, that's what I do. The holder was really simple. I ended up using the proportional editing tool. No, not the proportional editing. I ended up using the snap tool to snap to the charger. No, snap to the phone and that did make it look pretty realistic. So anyway, on to the materials this time. So for the materials, I pretty much just use insets to make the different layers of, you know, the smartphone screen, basically. I want the screen on the inside. Of Obviously, I want the outside to be sort of metallic, sort of not. But I ended up just sticking with the metallic because it looked really nice. Um, I do feel like the screen is not as reflective as I want it to be, so I will be changing that in the future. And something I ended up doing was adding more details at the top of the screen because it looked really dull. And for that, I use inset once more. I just have a thing for insets, okay? Um, next up, like after the middle speaker area was done, I realized that, okay, I probably need an LED or two over here. So I tried one on the left, then I went to the right side, tried over there, basically settled with what I got. I use a simple emission for the LED, but to be honest, it's too small to actually be visible on the main render, like it's barely visible. So I didn't really need to spend so much time on it, but I still did. Eh. Okay, anyway, let's move on to the lamp now. For the lamp, what I pretty much did was add like a glass surface just full transparency on the bottom basically no roughness um, for the top bit it ended up looking a lot similar to the um, what's, what's it called yeah it ended up looking a lot similar to the actual reference image that I thought it would so that kind of made me happy so yay but at the same time is this reference image actually a render Probably not. Probably not. And mine is way, 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 way far away from being realistic, okay? Mine has so many problems with it. Um, I do give different colors to the books. I struggle with it at once because I forget that they're linked together and they have the same material. So once I figure that out, yeah, it's a lot easier to, you know, it's a lot easier to do materials once you know where you're messing up um, something else I do is just try out tons of different colors and yeah at the end of it like at the end of everything I realized okay this back wall is looking a bit too dull so it's probably time to actually import you know the image that I was talking about earlier but I was failing to find a nice sized abstract art that I actually did that would look nice over here so I just went to unsplash.com I think it's unsplash.com it might be something else like .net or something please confirm that before going to the website but I went to unsplash and I got an abstract piece of art over there I used the import image as plain add-on which comes with blender to import it directly into my scene and it makes everything a lot easier in my opinion next up i changed the lighting a little bit and what that did was it basically 
made my scene a lot nicer. So maybe what I actually need to play with is the lighting right now and maybe some actual things about the materials. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I did this um, in this video. Next up, uh, I'm gonna try to finish this whole series in like one or two more videos. Let me know if you like this format. I would love to make more videos like this because it just lets me, you know, go through the whole process once more. Maybe I learn something that I did wrong and stuff like that. So yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.